<laughs> and a hieroglyph. All right, all right, all right. Um, good evening. Good evening to everybody joining us from your homes, from wherever you may be joining us this evening. Um, just welcome. Welcome to uh, what I like to call Virtual CAM, uh, the Virtual California African American Museum. I am Alexandra Mixhow. I'm the Manager of Education and Public Programs here at CAM. Um, I would like to start tonight's program um, in gratitude, with deep gratitude and appreciation, and thank yous to the Ford Motor Company, Smithsonian Sites Organization, uh, Netflix, of course, Makaya Sanders, and Verona Cesar Jones for their support in making tonight possible. We are joined tonight, of course, as you all know, to celebrate the new film adaptation of August Wilson's play, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which stars the late Chadwick Boseman and Viola Davis, including the incredible cast members that are joining us this evening. Um, and it's coming to Netflix soon. It actually premieres on December 18th. In it, of course, it, it follows Ma Rainey and the tensions and temperatures that rise at Chicago, in Chicago, um, in a Chicago music studio, excuse me, in 1927, when fiery, fearless mother of the blues singer Ma Rainey joins her band for a recording session. This iteration of Wilson's classic work is directed by Honorable George C. Wolf, adapted um, for the screen by tonight's panelist, Ruben Santiago Hudson, and was produced by Denzel Washington, Todd Black, and Danny Wolf. Acclaimed American playwright August Wilson is one of the monumental men featured in our Men of Change exhibition for which this program is in celebration in conjunction with. Wilson was born in Pittsburgh in 1945 to, German, to a German immigrant father and African American mother and he faced many societal challenges as a biracial young man not fully accepted by black or white communities. In his late 20s, he began to capture his experiences in the lives of those around him in poetry and long form narratives. While still largely unknown in his 30s, Wilson set out to write a series of 10 works, um, each chronicling the American, African-American life in a different decade, de different decade, excuse me. And these collected works became known as the American Century Cycle. Uh, the three, uh, the 10 pieces, excuse me, ultimately would take on three decades to complete and resulted in Wilson becoming a prominent, the preeminent voice for the Black American experience in process, in the process of elevating Black lives and the ordinary men and women onto the stage. Over the course of his career, Wart Wilson received two Pulitzer Prizes for Fences and the Piano Player and eight Best Play Awards for from the New York Drama Critics Circle and the National Humanities Medal. Wilson completed his final play in the century series Radio Golf before he died in 2005 at the age of 60. Um, there is not enough that I can say about this incredible cast that is joining us uh, with us this evening. Any student of Wilson or a person that appreciates his work understand that, understands that his work and his use of language and his connection to culture and life and its complicated nuances are no easy feat to engage and to bring to life as an actor. Wilson's work transforms those who are lucky enough to engage it and he gives us and the actors a privileged opportunity to transform themselves and their skills in the process. The work of Wilson is the gift that keeps on giving. In that way, each of these panelists are their own lovely additions to the men of change world that we're a part of. I fell in love with Wilson's work as an undergraduate student studying at Howard University in the fine arts department um, while reading Jitney. And years later, years later, was able to see his work on Broadway um, performed by an incredible cast, including Andre Holland and Ruben Santiago's uh, take on, um, also Ruben Santiago's take on, excuse me, the American Century Cycle at WNYC's Green Space in New York City. Um, in this, it was a spiritual masterclass on Wilson and his work. Having not yet seen the film, but knowing his commitment and dedication and rigorous approach to his work, I can only imagine that this adaptation will bring great honor to Wilson and his legacy. As I mentioned, the film premieres on December 18th, and we, of course, hope that you will watch the film with your loved ones. With that, I would like to introduce each of the panelists. Um, Coleman Domingo, who is uh, joining us, who is Cutler in the film, is a proud recipient of an honorary doctorate degree in humane letters from Ursinus College and a 2020 Juilliard School Creative Associate. He is a Tony Lawrence Oliver Dramatic Desk Drama League and NAACP Theater Award nominee, Ovi and Lucille Lauder, a more award winning actor, playwright, 
director and producer. He has recently been celebrated as a Newport Beach Film Festival's Artist of Distinction and honored by the Vineyard Theater for his 30 year body of work. Domingo recently filmed Without Remorse with Michael B. Jordan for Paramount um, and has starred in films that we all know and love. Of course, he starred in Coleman, I'm sorry, he starred in the American Academy Award winning Gary Jenkins drama of If Bill Street Could Talk. The Academy Award nominated Paramount film Selma as Ralph, Reverend um, Ralph Abernathy and Lee Butler, Lincoln by Steven Spielberg, two <laughs> films directed by Spike Lee, including Miracle at St. Anna, Red Hook Summer, and Passing <laughs> He is, of course, he's just incredible. I can't say enough. But the last thing I want to say about Mr. Domingo is that he has begun work on the first ever film adaptation of Ralph Ellison's story for PBS, uh, King of Bingo Game. Hello, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander, um, don't if you introduce me, don't don't just you know he got a bio. <laughs> don't do mine. He's got a bio. Like I don't cannot do, brush over these things. I can't don't brush do over mine. Please don't do mine. Do, I have to do, I'm gonna do you next, actually. T tell them look me up. Google me. <laughs> I'm gonna do this quickly, but I'm gonna do it with honor. Of course, Mr. Santiago Hudson is a formidable multi-hyphenate, a Tony Award-winning actor, an Emmy and Golden Globe nominated writer and director, a native of Lackawanna, New York. He studied at Bring, um, Bringhampton University and earned an MFA from Wayne State University. Uh, his theater directing credits, credits include Dominique Mercer's Paradise Blue, Skeleton Crew, um, also held the associate artist at the Signature Theater Company. Um, on film, he starred opposite of Al Pacino. I mean, who does that in The Devil's Advocate? Um, and also with Samuel L. Jackson in the 2000s version of Shaft. Um, on television, most recently, he has starred in the BT's The Quad. Um, I, where else? I'm trying to, you know, get the, the most important parts of just this incredible bio, but he's received the, N the NAACP Lifetime Achievement Theater Award at the Los Angeles NAACP Theater Awards in August of 2009. Um, and of course, we love his work on Lackawanna Blues. I hope you all have seen that film that's also being adapted for Broadway. Um, I want to next highlight of who we all love, um, Mr. Glenn Thurman, um, who is Potts in the film, the Academy, I'm sorry, the award-winning New York City-born actor enjoyed his first real taste of acting success as a young teenager, originating the role of Travis Younger in, on Broadway in Lorraine Hansberry landmark, landmark play, A Raisin in the Sun, opposite of Sidney Poitier and Ruby D as his various family members. Um, in 2008, Thurman scored his first Emmy win as outstanding guest actor for the HBO series and treatment and earned his second Emmy nomination for um, the same category in 2019 in his role as Nate Leahy in a um, ABC's How to Get Away with Murder. Of course, he is starring in this version of um, Marini's Black Bottom, but we have seen him in such other incredible um, TV and film adaptations and roles. Of course, we all know him from a different world. He's been in Cream Sugar, Criminal Minds, The Wire, Defender. Um, I'm loving him right now as, or before he passed on the show, Fargo as Dr. <laughs> Senator. Um, and uh, just a, you know, a really incredible actor and we're so honored to have him with us this evening, who will be joining us shortly. We also will have Michael Potts, um, who stars in the film as Slow Drag. He's an accomplished actor and stage screen actor who has most recently starred in the heartwarming Mr. Hawkins in the Tommy, Tony nominated musical, The Prom. Um, he of course is also star in Wilson's Jitney under Ruben Santiago Hudson's direction. And uh, the same year Potts uh, uh, appeared alongside Olivia Wilde and Tom Sturgate in the adaptation of George Orwell's dystopian masterpiece, 1984. He's a graduate of Yale School of Drama and has an extensive theater background. Um, we, this conversation this evening is moderated by Dr. Yuri McMillan, uh, UCLA professor and who researches and writes in the inter, uh, inter, intersections between Black cultural studies, performance studies, queer theory, and contemporary art. His first book, Embodied Avatars, Genealogies of Black Feminist Art and Performance, 
which uh, was published by New York University Press in 2015, is on Black performance art objects, hood, and avatars staged by Black women artists. He has published articles on performance art, digital media, hip hop, photography, and 19th century performance cultures and varied arenas such as women in performance, a journal of feminist theory, so is a critical journal of Black politics. Um, in addition, he's lectured at art museums, including MoMA PS1 and the Hammer Museum here in UCLA, and published numerous essays on Black contemporary art for the Studio Museum of Harlem. His work has been supported by the Ford Foundation and the Woodrow Wilson Foundation. Uh, we invite you to use the question and answer feature at the bottom of the screen to engage this incredible cast. Um, and we, with that, I would like to turn the conversation over to Yuri. Excuse me, one, one second. We, I'm hearing an echo. Is it? Is it? Oh, no. Somebody has their TV or something on, because I'm hearing everybody talk. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna that mute, kinda... so we'll, we'll all be able to hear each other very clearly, hopefully. But with that, I would like to turn over to Yuri. Great, well, thank you so much, Alessandra, for all your introductions, for Cam for organizing this. Um, so I had, the pro I had the privilege of being able to watch the film um, right before this panel. Um, so I wanna just ask some questions uh, to Coleman and Glenn as in terms of your roles, but also to Ruben. Um, Ruben, can you talk about the kind of translation of the play into the film of some of the things that had to be modified or, um, or enlarged? Well, you know, um, first of all, you know, you take a, a writer like August Wilson, who has very uh, mellifluous and, and muscular language, beautiful, melodic, you know, arias, and, and what I try to do is how do I tell this great play in, 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 in the form of making it a great movie and without taking any of August Wilson's power away, but highlighting his power, which is the beautiful uh, interpretation of African-American life and the way we do things. And black men uh, in their own spaces that, that where they can go and have platforms to speak, speak better than anybody in the world. Nobody can, can has the gift of gab as brothers when we get together and we and we in our private arenas. So I had to honor that. So, but I also had to find a way to tell some story through pictures, it's motion pictures. So how do I keep that muscularity and beautiful language of August's and still empower it in another medium uh, by adding more visuals and more opportunities to tell you where you should be looking and also listening at the same time. So that was my challenge. And, you know, and there's rules in Hollywood, you know, people don't want over 120 pages. And then, so I had to take a play that's that long almost already and then <laughs> open it up and, and make it a movie. And so, but I was determined to make sure that I did not reduce August, but I empowered August. So that was my challenge. Yeah, the film I noticed is very visually rich, you know? So one of the things I really noticed is just the, the language, the details in terms of, you know, the clothes that, you know, Coleman Glenn and Michael wear as actors, uh, the lighting, like the golden hue, the kind of, the sweat that you see to kind of convey how hot it is. Um, can you talk about some of those details too? You know, I even noticed right down to like, you know, well, Abby's shoes, for instance. That, that, well, the shoes is, is play, play a big part in, in the, in the, in the uh, drama. But when you talk about the visual of, of how uh, the, the visuals are depicted, that's George C. Wolfe. That's George and his DP. Uh, what I do is give you, I, 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 um, I give you a lot of texture in the language and a lot of texture in the visuals that I see. And then you have to show me what that means to you if you're the director. And George, who's a brilliant director and a great visionary, uh, just took that and, uh, and just, he, what we're trying to always do is find an opportunity to, to penetrate not only your psyche, but your heart. Uh, uh, don't forget 1927, that, that was an era of style. And so people who come up from the South who didn't have a whole lot of city style were finding their way into the city. And these guys were musicians which in, in, in think of 1927, a black person who's a musician, a musician and making a living at it has style. And, and Toledo says, you know, everybody got style, you know? So it's like George creates those beautiful visuals with his DP and his, and his uh, uh, um, designer of the, of, the, of the whole program. Coleman, can you talk about playing a character of Cutter and what you tried to bring to it as an actor? Well, 
First, can you hear me? I want to make sure we're good. Oh, there's Michael Potts. We have to welcome Michael Potts in. Hello, hey, Michael. Michael Potts. Well, hello. How y'all doing? <laughs> good, 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 good. If you was any kind of musician. If you were any kind of musician, you would check I, that Zoom. I, I, I needed to be an AI guy, you know, <laughs> IT guy to get them get on this webinar. My Lord, I've been trying since 745. Y'all know y'all just didn't want me to be on it. <laughs> we, we're glad you're here, Michael. We, we, we were just getting it started. We we're getting it started. Okay. Yeah. Now the band, the, the band is here. The band. Yeah. Is now here. you got the full band now. We're, yeah. we're, we're, yeah. My, minus one angel who's with us. Yeah, um, but um, Cutler, Cutler, um, <clears throat> we're we're talking about. Um, he just asked me a question about playing Cutler, and I'm sure we're going to get around to you, gentlemen. I think uh, Cutler is the band leader. He is the the Ma's proxy when she's not in the room. He, she, he is one of the one of the brothers in the band, and he's also the first face that the um, the white producers see. So I think that he's always working this balancing act of being one of the brothers, Ma's proxy, and um, you know, being part of you know smoothing over some of the uh, tensions that come across entering racist. Uh, uh, systemic racist uh, as in institutions. So it's a it's it's a balancing act, and he's also you know he's got his own integrity in terms of being an artist and what that means uh, for him is actually just being a session musician and that getting the job done and going home, you know, and having a true sense of and being very I think a very simple human being in many ways. And he has his power in the room because of Ma. So there's the rest of these men. They have they have agency in the world because of Ma because of this large figure that looms over the entire um, universe that we're in, you know what I mean? Who, who bucks the system. And so I'm like, well, I buck the system too, but under Ma, <laughs> you know what mm. I mean? Yeah, so that, that's who Cutler is. Glenn, I wanted to ask you about the, pro the playing Toledo, especially because you know all of you have had so much experience as actors and particularly on the stage as well as on screen. So Glenn, I want to ask what your experience was playing Toledo. And if you could kind of talk about what it means to kind of inhabit him as a character. Well, it's, it's great fun playing him, Toledo. And uh, this being the, the second time I've had a chance to, to bring the character to life. And one of the things that, that made it so much fun, particular arena, uh, although even the, the stage production is so wonderful that I've been a part of. But to go back to a question you asked a little earlier about the, the, the technical side of it, I, I think uh, Mr. Washington and Mr. Black, all and Netflix did a wonderful job in creating a world for us to play in. Uh, that world made it very easy to feel as though you were transported back to a time that was different than the time that we lived in. Uh, from the wardrobe, it was, it was, uh, Anne Roth and her, 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 her sense of, of knowledge, but she's been such a, a great force in show business for so many years, you know. I remember she took uh, one of the coats that I had and she balled it up and just balled it up and then threw it on the ground, you know. She says, I want this to be lived in. I want it to look like it's been lived in, this jacket, this suit, you know? And that's when I said, oh, everybody's in this. Everybody is, is knee deep in this show, you know? Uh, <laughs> it was such a, such a wonderful observation of where we had to go, you know? And everyone from the set designers to the, to the uh, DPs uh, uh, were all in, you know? Yeah. So, that uh, uh, made the world easy for me to do what I try to do best, you know, try to keep up with everybody <laughs> and, uh, and bring Toledo to, to life. And he had a particular uh, difference uh, in the, from the other band members, and he's the only one who speaks of love for another for a woman. You know, he, he's a man who's at the base of all of it is a man with a broken heart, really, you know. Uh, and uh, without giving it away to, to your, your viewing audience, but all of that is underneath 
what he says and does, you know. Uh, and um, August, I think, took particular care in making sure that that part of ourselves as Black men and Black women was represented, that we're not just all bluster, you know, that our bluster is a part of, of a, an avoidance, avoidance of certain uh, uh, frailties that come with us, you know, and that we're not often able to express. And so that's what I, I always loved about the character of Toledo, you know, that he was a man in love. Michael, can you talk about playing slow drag and I think particularly what it meant to play a musician um, for this role? Well, basically to play a musician for this role, it, it, you know, and I think I heard some, some bit of what uh, Ruben had said earlier before I could get on. <laughs> I'm still on there. August Wilson. <laughs> before y'all would let me in. Um, <laughs> but August Wilson, it, it is musical. Um, so, so it goes hand in hand. The, the, the character and the language go hand in hand because this is all a, a great August Wilson play. It's, it's symphonic. Everybody's a different instrument. And you have the, 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 the visualization of that through these, these different band members. Um, and so for me, you know, he's playing the upright bass. He's the cool guy. He's the mellow guy. He, he keeps he keeps the tempo. And part of just slow drag is like, let's get this done. Let's rehearse it the way we're supposed to do it. Let's get it done and let's get on out of here uh, and go have some fun. <laughs> or just get out of out of this space. Or I think for, for slow drag, a lot is like get 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 out of Chicago. And because these are different kind of white folks that I'm not, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm not too cool with. I don't know very very well. You know, he brings in the the Chicago bourbon, and they all have a good time like that. So, I mean, it's always fun. I think any any invitation to to do August Wilson is 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 you know it's a challenge. It is a mountain you're climbing. But oh my goodness, if you just even if you don't reach the summit, just you start getting up there and the altitude just becomes just amazing, an amazing experience. There's, 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 there's a high to doing it. When you just, you know, I say it all the time, when you get so into it and you get so deeply into these characters, it begins to play you. And that becomes the fun of it. Can you all talk about the kind of experience of working with Chadwick and working with Viola Davis as well um, in these roles? Yeah. Well, well the, the, sure. The, 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 the wonderful thing was that George uh, created a, what was it, two weeks, a two week rehearsal period that we had? It was yeah. a two week rehearsal period that we were, were afforded. And that made all the difference in the world, I think. Uh, we had never worked together before. Uh, and we were now being asked to gel as a band. Well, that two weeks enabled us to do that. You hear, you hear us kidding around with different things that you guys are saying, what the hell are they talking about? What, is that? what, is, what do you mean with you, any kind of musician? What is, what is, why are we <laughs> hot like this? Well, that, that goes back. That has history, that has bottom. That yeah. We were able to come up as a result of working with each other over that, that, that time, you know? Uh, and that's what we were able to bring to the camera in front of the camera as well, that camaraderie <clears throat> that was so necessary as, as band members, you know? Uh, the way guys um, work with each other, but, but relate to one another as well, especially if they're fond of one another, you know? So uh, that I think uh, rehearsal period had a lot to do with it. I think George also, I'm gonna piggyback on that. George knew what he was getting by casting a, a, a cast of workhorses. I think we're the workhorses of the industry. You have Glenn Turman, you have Michael Potts, you have Viola Davis and Chad Bozeman. You got people who want to get in a room and interrogate the work. Like 
strip it down, get in there, learn instruments. It, it's her, it's her, Herculean, I think, in a way, the task of like attacking an August Wilson. And so you've got people who want to dance with each other. You know, you have, Viola is a consummate professional, showing up, showing out, um, being willing to try things that are not truly comfortable at first. Think about Ma Rainey. Ma Rainey is a character of such size. And to play her, you, I feel like you had to you had to dance with her and figure, find the way she moves. And so what, watching that was fantastic, being a part of that. Chadwick Boseman as well. Someone who comes in, he comes in with a great sense of humor, a great sense of play. Um, we we just mess around with each other. We joked a lot. We um, we got in deep and we were all kind of fearless with one another because we knew we had to just have open hearts and challenge each other. And so I feel like it's a, it's a it is what what the best thing that I think we all understand in the theater is is when you're with someone and you're improving or you know you're you're playing you know just child you know games like theater games and you're tossing the ball up and they're catching it and saying yes yes and where are we going with this. That's the group that was there, and everyone, you know, played ball together. So it was a, a really lovely room. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. Mm -hmm. And piggybacking on that, it was. Um, I was in a room with people who are committed to the work. The work was first. The 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 play was the thing. Um, ego was left outside the door, and all anyone wanted, everyone just wanted to honor this piece we were doing. Uh, we were all so happy to be a part of this and, and doing August Wilson. And it was, it was a room that was about August Wilson and not any one individual person. I mean, it's the thing that Viola always says, you know, your presence is not the event. You know, the event was doing Ma Rainey's. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom was always the event. It was always front of mind for everyone who was involved from, and that's what I saw with Viola, Chad, Coleman and, 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 and Glenn. I mean, we we just gelled as a company, just cutting up, just just being black folk together. We rehearsed. Mm -hmm. We rehearsed in a Lithuanian, um, what was right? It? Music hall, or, hall, music hall, yeah, or something. something like that. But it, you you could tell that it was about to something was about to happen to it, like it was going to be renovated or something. I'm sure it's condos by now, but it was just like this <laughs> open, <laughs> empty, raw space, and you you can't you can't get more theater than that. It wasn't like we're right. in some shiny studio. And every, you know, everyone was being catered to. It was like, like we all just started again and we're all here for the work only. Am I right, you guys? It was like yeah, we were in yeah, here and in yeah. the trenches. It, it, was, it was nothing fancy about anything. It was <laughs> down and dirty, raw, Lower East Side theater, but in Pittsburgh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's true. It's right. right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ruben, did you want to add anything? Well, I don't know anything about it because it's a fallacy if you think the writer is invited to anything. Once, once uh, I'm like Ma Rainey, once I finish and I hand them the script, they get up, turn, put the pants on. No, I, I would no hello, no everything's going well, no rule, you should be here, we miss you. No, no, I, I was lucky to get a call saying, have you seen the film yet? And I said, I'd love to. So no, the writer is just that you write the film and they keep you as far away as possible so they can control what they're, what they're trying to do. Not that the writer would come in there and try to control it. Uh, maybe they thought he would because all, the writer was very close to August. But no, I, I, I did a movie called Lackawanna Blues and I sat on the set and I didn't offer anything. And that's the story about my mother. I watched people do things and mispronounced lines that my mother said that I wrote specifically and I just sat there. So no, I wouldn't have nothing to say about, about the Ma Rainey looking at these incredible actors and. The, and those people, I would just be there smiling, saying, man, they bringing this, they doing this thing. But no, I don't, I don't, you know, I worked with Viola Davis uh, in her first Broadway play, Seven Guitars. And I also hired Chad to work for me when I was producing the Century Cycle at the Green Space. Also, Chad had come to, when I was doing Gem of the Ocean and sat in the audience during tech rehearsal when I sat with him, asked me a few questions. I said, who is this brother with this aura? this integrity, you know, so I know them, but I would have, man, just to be a fly on the room with, on the wall with these guys, I would have loved it, you know, but um, 
<laughs> you know, I heard at one time somebody said, "Where's Rubens? He coming?" <laughs> I think we. <laughs> there was always that question. Like, Where's Rubens you know, coming? Yeah. That's yeah. true. We thought, well, yeah, you know, I'd have paid my own fare to come. I, I'd, well, I'd, I'd, have call, I'd have come Greyhound bus. I think you know, knowing just to, that just your hands were on it, that's I think that gave us some. You know, there, there was peace and joy in that, knowing that your hands were all on it and in it, and knowing that you are truly one of the consummate. Um, keepers of uh, of August's work. Yeah, August knowing, work, knowing that we knew we were in good hands and knew that what we we saw there, we're like, all right, he took out this speech and this speech, but you know what? I think we can get to it because he gave me a link here. He knows exactly how to get me there. So, and that's you, my friend. But it was trusting. One, one, one of the one yeah. of the. I'm, go ahead, Glenn. I'm still crying though. I'm still one, crying. One of, <laughs> don't, don't cry, Ruth. Don't cry. <laughs> one of the big, one of the, the the things I got a big kick out of and took it as a big compliment are the times that, and there were more than one, the times that Denzel would come to our tent. You know, we had a little side tent and we would rest after a scene was done, waiting for the scene to be changed or the next shot to come. And Denzel, who most of the time stayed away from us as we were performing. But every once in a while, he would ease through and stick his head into the tent and say, I want to be up there with you guys. Damn it, I want to be up there. I want to be up there. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Couldn't man. help himself, he just, right? He'd, he'd disappear again, and, and we wouldn't see him for a while. But that's how we knew we were, we were gelling and we were on the right track. So, oh, yeah. Constantly acted like Mr. Washington to come by and say, hey, man, I want to I get in the fray with you guys. I really do. That was fun. But that's you too, Ruben. I mean, we, we remember Jitney. Ruben knew everybody and everybody's role <laughs> in the show. That's, that's why I wasn't up. invited. That's why I was saying stay away. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> I, you know, but you know, it's interesting. Role. But listen, man, it's interesting when you write something and I have to teach a lot of times when I have associate directors or assistant directors that I bring on and they'll see that I wrote a certain thing or I gave a certain note and an actor doesn't do it. And they look over at me and I say, be patient. You know, let's see what that actor is going, going to do with this. That's, that's the way I saw it. Let me see what this, what this actor does. Now, of course, Michael Potts, who, who, who I've directed, you know, who's worked with me knows that I let it go so far. And then I'm like, and I won't tell you what the line is. I said, is that the line? The rhythm seems a little bit off. It's a word that seems off. Now, I don't know exactly what word that is. And then they'll look back at the script and say, oh, oh, I left the and out or the butt out or, or I added this. And I won't tell them because that's not how I direct. I sit back and I let them discover and let them fix it. You know, I don't try to fix it as a director. I'm not a fixer. And as a writer, I'm not a fixer. I'll write it and then I have to deliver it and hand it to you. And uh, uh, with all the expectations that you would cherish it as much as I did and, and take care of it. So I want to ask about the blues because you know there's another character in this film. The blues is its own character, and I want to kind of think about that because I remember there's a part in the film where Ma says the blues is life's way of talking. Um, it helps you get out of bed, and I want to ask you all as actors, you know, what you thought about the blues. I think particularly the blues connection to black folks. You know, what does the blues kind of mean in terms of thinking about the Black experience? Um, and as actors, how do, you, how do you think about your own relationship to the blues? I think the blues is music that makes you feel like you're not so alone in the world. Makes you feel like somebody else is, has your heartache, has your trials and tribulation, has your history, I think, and has your moan. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. it feels like that. So I feel like I think that's what Ma's saying as well, that it makes you feel more connected to each other. And, and it helps you It helps you go to sleep at night and helps you get up in the morning. Uh, many a blues song starts with woke up this morning. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's like, okay, I made it. I made it. I made it. I'm in the number. I, I can do it again. And I'm going to have trials and tribulations, but I'm not alone on this journey. And this journey is a human journey. And it's deep in the soul of African Americans. And so I think it's a move, it's music that connects us, you know? Um, like we, we have this, Michael and I would um, joke a lot, what we would always do the moaning song together. Mm -hmm. Just, mm -hmm. <laughs> because that moan, you know everything by that moan. Mm -hmm. 
You don't have mm. to utter one lyric. It's a moan. If you hear somebody moan, mm, you know you hear some old black women. Y'all, y'all hear y'all hear yourselves up there. Old black women moaning. You know what that moan means. <laughs> that moan mean. and that moan is so much. That moan is chicken and chitlins and collard greens. It, it is it is a sway in your walk. It's your your husband's first breath. It's your child's first step. It's all that. I'm preaching now. I'll let you go. And this you it's go. the yeah. first it's the first yeah. thing you hear in this play if you look at the script. Absolutely. The first yep. thing I say is you hear a growl, a groan, a moan. Mm. Absolutely. It's the first thing if you look at when the script is published, which it, which it, which it will be, that's the first thing I say. And but if you listen blues, and there's just like you said, you listen to that you know exactly what it's about. With the blues, the blues is life stories. The blues mm. is where some, some what, what white folks would say, once upon a time, the blues is, man, you ain't gonna believe this. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and that don't mean it's negative. That could be like, right. you know, I just hit the number today. Or it could be so bad as the bowl weevil just took the whole crop. Or it could be so beautiful as, I met a beautiful girl today, blues. Or, or, or it could be, I had a little red rooster. Anybody see my little red rooster? Or it could be Martin Luther King just got assassinated. The blues mm -hmm. is the most clearly documented historical documentation of black life in America. Yes, sir. Everything that's ever happened to black people in America is in the blues. That's Everything. right. That's right. And so, and so that's why I call it Lackawanna, like my play Lackawanna Blues. It's Lackawanna mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. And that's all in the, in the blues is your story. And it's a because you couldn't be singing it if you didn't make it whatever whatever trial or tribu yeah. tribulation or party you just came from, you wouldn't be you wouldn't have made it. You couldn't sing the song if you didn't make it. I made it. So it is mm. actually a celebration of life as as mm. well as a documentation of it. It is the soundtrack. It's the soundtrack of our lives. It's life force. It's the current of our lives. It's continuous. You wake up with it. You go to bed with it. You it's it's with you throughout the day. It is so so a part of your essence your being it's an engine if you listen to if you you can listen to to four different kind of blues back to back to back and they'll give you a whole different mood if mm -hmm. you listen to to etta baker uh, one dying blues it's it makes you feel like moving if you listen to if you listen to to t-bone walker stormy stormy you know, stormy monday blues you know it just make you shake your head and say oh lord they call us done but then he go to church and fall down his knees on his knees and pray so you know you can go through and then you can hear you can hear uh etta james say i'd rather go blind mm. than lose you that's how much i love you so we can't, it could just, the blues is everything. Mm. Big Joe Turner scream, uh, Boogie Woogie Country Girl. <laughs> Come on, Boogie Woogie Country Girl, that's what I'm looking for. So it's like anything, you know, when you talk about the blues, well, I ain't gonna give that lecture, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold that lecture for next university. Mm. Yeah, so I also am thinking about the question of now, right? You know, this has been a really rough year for people. And I think, you know, we're following a really contentious election um, with everything else going on. You know, I really wonder about thinking about the now, you know, what for people watching this film right now and thinking about the legacy of August Wilson and traveling a hundred years back to the 1920s. Um, I don't know if Ruben, if anybody else wants to answer this as well, you know, what are, what are, do you want audiences to kind of feel or get from watching this film? Well, simply the complexity of, of, of life itself Anything August Wilson would say, anything that's in human life is in black life. There's nothing, the difference is we have to navigate it differently. And for us to reveal to you, the audience, general audience, white or whatever, how we operate when you're not in the room. But if we, if we do that culturally specific without holding anything back, without trying to prove anything, but just be who we are, then you have learned something. I learned you something. So and what, what, there are things that, that's in the movie that aren't in the play, because there are things that, but nothing that I put in the movie that's not in the play did I not get from out of the play. I got it from the play. Like when you see the end, I'm not gonna give, give it away, but there's a line that one of the first lines Sturdivant says is that Trump, is that Trump a player gonna be here? So that's important to him. So you gotta watch that, that through line. You gotta watch a person's through line and see where the writer echoes it 
or whether that why that matters for them to say and do that. So there, we have to, any great art leaves residue. When you leave it, you, leave it, you can't leave it there totally. Some of it goes with you. Now, when you go to see a play or an art or a dance concert or, or a music concert and you leave and say, I wonder what I'm gonna cook tomorrow. That ain't great art. <laughs> but when you leave and say, oh my God, what that dude went through, or man, that he really loved that woman. Or, wow, wasn't he so poetic? What, what, look at that sacrifice. Or if you listen to a Duke Ellington Suite, if you look at, see a, a Romare Beard and a James Ward, Elizabeth Catlett sculptor, uh, you don't just walk away <laughs> and don't, and that does not, the residue of that doesn't linger. And that's what August Wilson's work does. You can't leave August Wilson play and, and start talking about what I'm cooking tomorrow. If you leave piano lesson or two trains running, uh, Joe Turner and say what I'm cooking tomorrow, you will sleep. You had to be sleep the whole play. So great art, the sign of great art is the residue that travels with you, you know, on and on. People still remember plays that people are still talking about. Look at Glenn Turman right there. Great Glenn, the great Glenn Turman. He, the woman just described said he played Travis in Raising the Sun. Now look at this gentleman now. That means he was a little boy. They're still talking about that. You're talking about residue? That was a statement in American history, not just theater history, American history, in the same way August is doing. You know, they're talking about him all over the world. People in China trying to figure out how to translate it. You know, in Nigeria, they want to put it in, in Ibu. You know what I'm saying? So that's the sign of great art, the way yes. it never lets you go. That's true. Coleman, Glenn, and Michael, were there particular moments that surprised you or particular scenes that were really kind of like, you know, your favorite kind of scenes when you were filming this? Well, I think we've talked about it uh, before. Uh, it was the moment when Chadwick was having a, a struggle trying to, to uh, navigate a particular scene a monologue, the one where he and he's questioning God, he's doubting God. And um, of course, uh, it was a very uh, uh, important monologue, but a very painful monologue to deliver. And um, I watched my fellow lesbian here, Mr. Domingo, step in at a particular time and encourage the young lesbian to go forward, to not abandon where he was headed with it. And he knew it, he knew it was painful, but he assured him, Coleman did, assured Chadwick that he was on the right track and that he had to keep going, that he could not abandon that, that thought and uh, encouraged him to do that. And it was, during the shoot. So it wasn't in a rehearsal, which those kinds of things might happen in a rehearsal. But while the camera is running and the scene is on, uh, for this actor to uh, encourage this man like, to, to do what he did was something I had never seen. And like Ruben just said, I've been doing this over 60 years. So and I, I've worked with work with some very fine, fine, fine talent. But I've never seen anyone do what Mr. Domingo did in encouraging uh, Chadwick to deliver one of the greatest monologues that you ever want to hear. Coleman and Michael, did you have scenes that surprised you? No, I think Glenn said it. That, that, that was... <laughs> That was, um, yeah, that was a, 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 a monumentous moment uh, during the shoot. It's a moment that it just became still, I think, where, you know, all the atoms started, were just suspended for just that time in the room. I mean, every atom was suspended for that moment um, to make space for it. Um, and, and, yeah, Coleman and, Coleman and Chad in that moment, it's incredible. By then, I think we all developed such um, 
I just watched the film again last night. I hadn't seen it since May when we got our link to watch it. And I saw it, you know, the first time you're watching the film, you watch it with, you know, oh, wow, that's interesting. They chose that take. They did that thing. Oh, that's the way that works. And so you're a bit more judgmental, <laughs> to be honest. Mm. And then you sit with it. And then I was like, I need to see it again before I start talking about it again. So I know what I'm talking about. And I was incredibly moved last night. And that moment struck me again. And I remember we can only get to that place. And I think why I felt like I had permission to do that is because of the way the room was set up. I know that Michael would do the same for me. Glenn would do that for Michael, that we were in it together. Like Michael said earlier that um, the play will start to do you. And it took on a life of its own. And we were in that moment, you know, it is that convergence when we were all of who we are, the Coleman's, the Michael, the Glenn's, the Chadwick, but it were also Levy, Cutler, <laughs> you know, slow drag, Toledo was in the room. So there were eight men in that room. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Trying to work this out. And August gave us, he gave us that for us to drop our souls into and to bring everything that we had. And whether I knew it or not, I did not know. We, no one knew about uh, Chad's struggle. But in that moment, I just felt that there was, there was a huge, a seismic struggle that we, we all had to get in there. And I was just the one who, who had the, I had the ball. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta make sure he catches this. And we gotta bring, bring it home together. I think that can only happen with an ensemble that I've been a part of like with these men, truly. That's the only way that could happen is that you needed that strength of everyone because you know that no one will let you fall. August Wilson gave you the words, George gave you the guidance, and then these men, and I say it again, this band, these men, it's about these men, and these men who help, um, we're talking, what is this, men of change here? This is what men do. August wrote this, you know what I mean? And we, we live it, and we're saying, this is, the, this is our best self. This is us at our very best, black men at our best that we can get in there, wrestle with each other, fight with each other with ideology. And we can also lift each other up and be there for each other when you need it. And thank God we were there because that moment I think was pivotal uh, to help him keep going. And I feel like we've been a part of his, uh, his strength in getting through to, to create this film that I know that he's proud of, truly. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I know we're going to transition to uh, the Q&A soon, but before we do that, I wanted to ask, kind of going off of your point, Coleman, about what it means to be Black men in this film, you know, embodying August uh, language, and I think also in terms of being on this set where so many of the key roles are Black folks, you know, with George Wolf, for instance, uh, with Ruben, you know, I just want to ask about your kind of experience and what it what it was like to be on this set, to be surrounded with so much talent, but also with so much kind of like-mindedness. There wasn't a lot of explaining you had to do. <laughs> <laughs> you could show up and be your fullest. Listen, I, I like to say sometimes I'm one of the blackest people you'll ever meet. I can be my most colored self, I, then I can be my most educated self. I can be an academic, I can be, um, a fool, but I would be seen as that complex individual, that I can be all of those things instead of feeling like that I have to, you know, oh, I have to compartmentalize that so I can right. be seen a certain way. There was none of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And also, also oh, excuse me, go ahead, bro. Go for, no, go for it, no, go for it, Ruben. Yeah, you know, and also, like even for me as a writer, you know, having Denzel as a producer and having George as a director, it's like, I didn't have to explain my day every day. I didn't have to go <laughs> exactly, say, right. what does that mean? You know, uh -huh. what does it mean if he says, it's like, it's, like, <laughs> it's yep. like there's a line, you know, that August wrote uh, uh, when, when Levy looks at, does he make when she leave the room and he say, happy birthday to the lady <laughs> with the cake. <laughs> the lady with the cake. <laughs> now, because, my favorite lines. <laughs> hey, now, now me and George went at it for that line. George says, dude, do we have to say that? I said, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, he got to say oh, that, George. Yeah. And, and so we just laugh about it, but, 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 because he knew what that meant. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he, so, and, 
it's 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 refreshing and it's empowering to be with your own and they understand the same challenges, the same journey that you're walking. Uh, it, it just means the world. And right now we're in a pivotal moment, a critical moment in American history and in the world where we as people of color are coming together, realizing the importance. Again, we did it a couple of times and we let it go in different eras, but now it's another era that we have, we're realizing again, we need to come together because we need to be the great force we can be supportively and, 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 and in every way, men and women, all of us, you know, but to look around and see these brothers, you know, working together and, you know, we were, I was in the trenches 18 months before I handed it to them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I, I was surrounded by people who cared about me who understood my pain, who understood my joy, who understood, as, as Ozzie Davis would say, that secret cup of gladness in being black. Mm. You know, and, That's uh, it. You about yeah. to get me. I'm about to jump up yes. and run across this room like I'm in church, Ruben. That's <laughs> it. I, I know you would throw it. something at me if we was I'm in the room. You throw a shoe at you. Just... <laughs> throw throw <laughs> like that, yeah. for instance, or you like that. He said he'd throw a shoe at me. Now somebody would say, like, you know, Wow! Did you do that? He threw <laughs> shit at him. Such an act of aggression. Do you need a timeout? Do you need a timeout? If we, and time if out, I know, right? I know if Coleman throws shoe at me, I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Ruben, you put your foot in that. <laughs> I, I, I have a line in my play, your blues ain't sweet like mine, when he say, it, the soup was so good, it made you want to jump up and slap somebody. And the white woman would say, jump up and slap somebody? He said, yeah, you ain't never said that. So it, when we say that, we don't have to explain that amongst each other. Right. It's true. Black without apology. <laughs> that, that like coming up, without coming apology. Up two, yeah, coming up 200, 300 years ago, we weren't allowed to read and learn, you know, so a lot of our communication was physical. So, you know, that little, you know, that little tap on the shoulder, that thing on the chin, you know, that hug or that, that, that clip in the jaw. And so they wonder why we're such a physical people. I mean, the women in the village greeted men by dancing and we went to war by stomping, you know, so it ain't nothing for us to, you know, in, in the forties and the twenties to grab a woman by the hand and say, come here, gal, you know, you do that now you pull back a nub. It's a different time, you know, so we coming back together. I'm not, I'm not gonna say, we, we are coming together. We're making a big force and, you know, with the Black Lives Movement and on and on color of change and, move on and everything, we're recognizing each other. We're taking a look at each other again. And with, with Denzel saying he's gonna do these movies, it means he's taking a look at August. He's taking a chance. He putting him out there and that's what we need more of. And that's what, what, what I'm encouraged by. So there's a question about August Wilson and actors. And I thought this would be a good one to have from the audience. Um, this person says, I've noticed there's a kind of fraternity among black men who came up as theater actors doing August Wilson plays. That's very moving, but also feels like a special lineage. Do you all feel that too as actors? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, absolutely, I don't think there's any question about it. Because the characters, uh, August Wilson writes, it's, they're so authentic. They're, 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 it, it resonates in your bones. Every fiber of your body, as, as, certainly as a black man, knows these people, even if I can't always articulate it. And even if I have to struggle with Mr. Wilson, you know, to meet the challenge of August Wilson in embodying these men, I think there is, I, I think it becomes that kind of camaraderie because we understand what we had to go through in the sense of embodying it truly and authentically taking on these individuals, taking on the truth and authenticity of who these, who these people are. Um, and, and you need each other for it. It does not work in an August Wilson play to try and do it by yourself. It just doesn't work. Everyone, again, it's that symphony every instrument, it's, it's, it's a part of that whole symphony. You, it, it just doesn't sound right <laughs> if, every, if somebody's off trying to do their own thing. 
and, and I think it's that kind of communion in a sense, that kind of communion uh, of doing these, telling these stories does create this, this fraternity. Um, um, you feel special. I feel part of a very special fraternity yeah. because I've gotten to do it. I've been, I, you know, for a long time as an actor, say, nobody's going to let me do August Wilson. <laughs> you know, nobody's going to let me do it. <laughs> Nobody thinks I can do August Wilson. <laughs> you know, yeah. and thank God Ruben Santiago Hudson came along and said, yeah, <laughs> you, you do it. But that's what it is. Oh, so you do feel a part of an, uh, an incredible fraternity. Yeah. And what's wonderful about that fraternity is it, span, it spans so many different decades of characters. In yeah. other words, you've got characters that are 20 years old and you've got characters that are 70 years old, all in the same play, you know, that uh, that means that, you know, you can have a career doing all this work. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. yeah. That, that much True. Depth of material for actors, you know, uh, black men, to uh, perform in, you know, 10 plays and all these different characters and all these different age groups and all these different uh, walks of life. So he's really laid out uh, uh, quite a feast uh, for an athlete, actors with appetite. I just I like agree that. with all of it. With I agree appetite. with all of it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And to know that like when, when you're a part of that fraternity and you do that work, you feel like, I mean, I don't know, you, you, your shoulders, you know, perk up a bit more. You feel like I'm a part of something that we were able to wrestle with this language. I, it, a demand has been placed on you to elevate your craftsmanship to August Wilson. So you feel like, ooh, I, I did that. I'm, I'm with these people, you know what I mean? Ooh, I want to get in and wrestle with Ruben. I want to get in and do that. <laughs> yeah. I want to get in like, when we going to box together? When we go, I can't wait for the day where I'm playing Troy Maxson and Fences someday, you know what I mean? I'm very young though right now, so you know. <laughs> I'm still sprightly, so you know. I, yes, yes. No, for me, babe. You're like, you're like Glenn said, you, you start off, you start out as a young boy playing Ruben and Joe Turner, and the next thing, yep. you, you know, 50 years later, 60 years later, you're playing Solly Two Kings, or you're playing yep. Bynum, you know, right, so right, you were playing right. Ruben, and then 60 years later, in the same play, you were playing Bynum, mm -hmm. you know, and in between, you got to play Floyd, King, mm -hmm. Mr. You right know, to so yeah, exactly. Canewell, Canewell. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like somebody asked me to do Canewell. I said, who am I be? Papa Canewell, or Grandpa mm -hmm. Canewell? My, my Canewell was, you know, 1996, 1994. Mm -hmm. So no, I'm not Canewell anymore and I'd be a fool to think that. But our responsibility, mm -hmm. but some people think they still play when they're 64, that they still play for it. But um, our responsibility is to make sure that we create the path for that next generation coming behind. Because yeah. some people think there's an August Wilson technique. It's not a technique, it's a style. It's, an, it's a cultural specificity and authentic style of Northern colored people. People who are Southern colored move North and nothing changed but the location. Some of them brought their roosters with them. Somebody, some of them <laughs> exactly. brought their, their, all, their recipes in the old Bible, but they stayed colored. So when you get out of that context, not, and, and what's really the challenge for a lot of actors, particularly young actors, is the era. What was the specific behavior of that era? Where's your research? And you'd be saying, well, I don't know what they did in 1911. Look at the photographs. <laughs> look at, exactly. Look, at look the, how look they, they stand. Look at the way they stand. Look at the way they stand. Look at the way they stand. Look, look at the hat. Look exactly. at the way somebody was show, telling me something about something. And, and uh, they showed me a picture. Man, you got to watch this. And I looked at it. I think it was, Glenn, I think it was Fargo. And I said, why ain't Glenn tell them dudes how to wear a hat? Everybody hat was sitting back on their head, sitting at the top of their head like that. I said, oh, brother, they were, that was a crown. Do you wear a crown like that? So I said, Glenn, I'm a, I got to talk to you. <laughs> so I said, tell these brothers how to wear a hat. And I'm a hatter. You know, you got my bald head going today, but you see me normally, Coleman, you, you always I got, got my a good hat, hat on. You I got, always got a good hat. A you know, my wife tell me I got to get a whole new apartment you for know, my hands. Really, but, but really, I got you, that from the- Hey, Ruben, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, you know? <laughs> Sometimes you pour the water on them. Just oh, pour right. them on them. <laughs> Just make sure they get wet. Well, <laughs> but you I, could do the I, research. I showed and, them. I showed yeah. them. I did by showing them what you do with a hat. Well, some people don't, you know. But you a hatter. I mean, you wear a cowboy hat to a Stutzen to a to a pork pie. You wear it. You know, it's called yeah, We all yeah. the same way. But you know, you learned that era, and August gave you an acting, uh, 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 
challenge. Challenge. Do that research. Yeah. What is the 80s? What yeah. is the 60s? What was the black power movement, you know, in, in two trains running? What what's going on, you know, in uh, uh, Aunt Esther's parlor? What what are these black people that own homes? We ain't say renting. That's e that's Eli's house. So him and I and Esther. So we talk about 1906 in Pittsburgh. So I would have on the walls photos of what that street actually looked like in 1906, because there's a photo somewhere. White men used to make a living going around shoot, shooting pictures of black folks in their areas. Boop, boop, black, black. It's everywhere. You can see it. And so you do your research and you come in totally equipped, equipped to handle your business. <laughs> That's right. So someone has an interesting question. Someone is asking you guys as um, as actors, but I think this also applies to you too, Ruben, as a, as a writer. Did you see- I'm an actor too. I'm an actor too, y'all. Come on now. He's a wonderful <laughs> actor. Ruben, uh, wonderful an actor. actor. They wanted to know if you saw these characters in your everyday life, in your oh, own Oh yeah. Homes. Sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. I didn't have to Absolutely. go so far away. I, I can go to images of my own family, especially my stepfather's side from Virginia and grandparents that came from the South, from Alabama and Georgia. You just go and you go. And that's the beautiful thing about August Wilson for us as well. It's like, I don't have to go so far outside of myself to do the research. I go in my families, I go to, to legacy and stories. I go with what I have and, you know, and inquire there because that's when you want to get the authentic stuff. Recipes, yeah, you, you, you name it. I think it's, it, so much is there. Sure. I mean, yeah, much of my early acting was mimicking the folks I was around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's what you, you went, I mean, the big deal was church. That was the thing on Sunday. So you become an observer. We would name the different people by, by their characters, you know, Professor Shock, <laughs> or <laughs> just <laughs> because there were just so many characters in the community. And, and that becomes a part of you. So no, you didn't have to, yeah. I saw all of these, I saw these people when I would go to the barbershop as a kid with my grandfather. Black men together in a barbershop in the South? Oh, come on. <laughs> Come on. But now. you know, see, but we had a cheat sheet. <laughs> see, we're, we're the generation that's right next to those people who came up. Oh, yeah. So oh, we yeah, right. actually could watch right. that. We could see, we could see watch we knew them that get up and put a tie on and not go yeah. nowhere. A tie yeah. and a hat. You know, be sitting there looking out the window, where you going? You know, just, that was their integrity. Yeah. So we Get had a cheat sheet. So it's our responsibility to pass that on to that next generation right. and through our research and through, because that was the people that raised me, Farmville, Virginia, McKenzie, Alabama. That's why when people say, you from the country? I've been in New York for 37 years. You know, so right. now I can be New York or I can be that, that Lackawanna country boy that I am, you know, right. so. It's, we, but we have to pass that on because each generation gets another generation away Some from way those from yeah. people. So yeah. they got to do their research and we got to, you know, not forget that we can't let Yale and Juilliard and Dartmouth train our grandmother's song out of us. We got to mm. remember our grandmother's songs, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, Ruth. So someone has a question, given all that's occurred this year, what advice would you give your younger self? What advice would we give our younger self? I think, well, I think everyone on the Zoom is a, a, a teacher. Um, and I know that I'm speaking to my younger self a lot right now because I'm, I'm teaching at Yale and Juilliard and wherever else they'll have me. And I know the thing that I'm trying to teach is hope because that's what I would teach myself. I'm not teaching actually about the business or like, oh, how to do all this stuff and become an actor or whatever. That's kind of like, you know, supplemental, I think. I think it actually is about teaching about um, having faith and having hope, having um, learning to have a, how can you have agency in the world? So I think more than anything, I would, um, I would talk to myself about that To No matter what rigors, I, th I think the thing that I know for sure, if I don't know anything else, I'm like, I know people have had it worse than I have. And I'm here, I'm, I'm a descendant of slaves and people are here because they loved hard, they laughed hard, they survived and so will I. So that's what I teach. I'm like, whatever you've gone through this year, let me tell you, somebody else had it worse. And the, and the reason why you're here is because they, they 
They they moved mountains. You know what I mean? They swam oceans. They 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 emptied oceans with a homemade spoon, as uh, James Baldwin would say. You know, so I think that's what I would tell my younger self. It's like, you, oh, you will, you will overcome this and things will get better and you will move the dial little by little, but you will move the dial. But you have to be conscious, you have to be mindful and you have got to be in it. And you can't be silent and you must, otherwise that's complicit. You have to be in it. And you have to do something every single day. That's what I would say to my younger self. I would give him a nice little lecture. <laughs> I guess I would say I, I, I would tell uh, my younger self that uh, all the effort, all the work is, is worth it. Everything mm. you're putting into it is absolutely worth it. Um, and, and, and the payment is different. Mm. You know, the payment is not what you expect or how you expect, but it's absolutely worth it. And number two, uh, proceed through the world without apology. Don't apologize for being as good as you are, Come as on, big man. as you are. Come on. Um, for the space you take up, um, you 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 just owe it to yourself to be great. Mm. I would say that I, I would I would reinforce uh, something that was told to me years ago my dear friend, and I never forgot it. And the older I get, the more uh, value it has. And that was uh, the statement, uh, there is no finish line. Um, we often think that uh, once I get here, or once I do this, once I do, you know, then I've, I've made it, or, or if I don't get there, I haven't made it, or if uh, this doesn't work out, I don't know what to do. But, uh, this wise man said, "When there is no finish line, mm. keep going, mm. keep going, keep going, keep going." Mm. I think uh, I think I would tell my younger self to hug my mother more. You know, mm. running out to basketball games and running out to football games. Boy, stop and hug your mother again. Mm. I, I would, I would, I miss that. You know, so if I could tell my younger self something. Cause all the mistakes I made and everything, they built the fabric of who I am, and and you know they 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 learned me something, and you know I had to, I had to learn diplomacy. I wouldn't, and I had to learn etiquette, and I had to learn, you know, a lot of things. But I think I needed all the mistakes and all the the fumbles to to gather everything together. But the thing that I would tell my younger self, I I don't know why, but just hug mama more, hug her, hug her some more. Mm -hmm. I hugged her a lot. Not that I didn't hug her because I gave her some sugar. She did because she'd tell you, come here, boy, give me some sugar. <laughs> but I should have, I could have took, I, I wish I could have took some more sugar. Mm -hmm. You know. That's for sure. So someone's mm -hmm. asking that we invoke George Wolf um, and wants us to talk about the experience of you guys working with him as a director. I wouldn't use the word, listen, I'm gonna frame it like this. this. George is an extremely challenging, inspiring, spirited. Um, he will wring every ounce of um, um, experience out of a line, out of a word. He really sets you up to do your best and he's gonna challenge you. He's not going to let you rest on anything that you think you know already. He wants you to be open. He wants you to not know. He wants to break it down and build it up again. And um, it's tough, he's demanding. I'll just tell you that much, he's demanding. But I, I appreciate it because I will tell you this, the, and I've told a few of you this, that. It was one of the most arduous rehearsal processes where I, you feel like you, you start to doubt yourself. Do you know what you're doing? He's asking you to rethink what you know, what you came into the room with. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. And then on the last week of uh, shooting, right before I did um, that speech about uh, Reverend Gates, he, you know, he has your private rehearsal for your monologues. He said, oh, come on, let me, let me talk to you for a second. Let me talk to you. You know, you've been directing a lot, right? You've been directing a lot, you know, you know too much now. 
I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you know too much as an actor. I was like, wait, what? I don't understand that. He was like, you've already figured out how to play the notes and I want you to not know. You've done the work, but you're, you're, you, and he hit me where it hurt and he was right. I know he was right. Oh, I knew exactly the way I should play this. I figured it out. I know, <laughs> you know, but he wanted me to unknow it again and go to that uncomfortable space and boy, was it liberating. And I take that lesson with me now to everything else that I'm doing. It's that reminder of somebody who's been in the industry for 30 years to rethink what you know again, to go to that uncomfortable space. So he's willing, he can, he can size you up like a doctor and like, I'm a zone in on that. And we're gonna break that open right now. And you be like, oh no, I don't want to, it hurts. I can make a career off this, this feels good. He's like, no, I want to <laughs> make a career off of this. I'm gonna bust that right out of you. So you <laughs> no, I've been making a whole career out of this, this is fine. <laughs> so that's George C. Wolf. <laughs> um, and I love him to death for it because I think that he, he wants his actors to be their, not even be their best. I don't even want to say that. He wants you to get everything out of it that he knows you want to get out of it. And he will wrestle with you. And I respect him dearly for that. Yeah. One of the, one of the, biggest, one of the biggest compliments I've, I've ever gotten and I, was from George uh, as an actor in Georgia. Uh, is George is everything that Coleman just said he is, and uh, one of the biggest compliments I got I've gotten as an actor, especially at this stage in my career, was when he said it near the end of, near the end of rehearsal. Oh, and I trust your truth. Mm. Mm. Trust your truth. Mm. Mm. Whoa. You, you should see what it's like to to work with it. You know, I worked with him as a producer on Like One of Blues. He produced the play. I worked with him as an, an actor in Jelly's Last Jam. He, he directed me in that. And I worked with him as a writer and also for Like One of Blues and also for this. I mean, he took my play apart one time. I walked in his office. I want to see you. Walked in my office. He was sitting on the floor with his in his socks and he had yes. taken my play apart and he had it in all sections on the floor and he said there's a great play in here somewhere <laughs> where i would go to his house i would send him ma rainey and he said when can you can, when can you get down here i said i'll be down there about two okay i'd walk in there and he would have cut up all my stuff and, and paste it and move what about this you think about this what if you cut this section out and throw that over there what if you, i say I, and I would pick up all these scraps and I would be like, wait a minute, man, I just, I spent two weeks trying to put this two, this. and then I'd go and trick, figure, put the puzzle together and start, he's just, just interchange these things and see if they work. And you know August's rhythm, find the rhythms, make this, you know. And so what Coleman's saying about the challenge, but the thing, you can only challenge that way when your brain is that elevated. He is so far ahead, he's such a visionary. He he will give you a, a chance to fix it, and if you don't, he'll fix it. Uh, yeah. Lloyd Richards, the great Lloyd Richards, who I worked with as well, he would never fix it. He would sit there on it for a month until you fix it. <laughs> George, yeah. he'll run his to his patients, get to the point, then he gonna fix it. Yeah. So so, but he's gonna always give you the chance and give you the equipment and to fix it. But his his brain, he, he he's he's one of the very few people that I really can say is brilliant. Oh, I you call know, everybody. Him, I, yeah, everybody likes to be brilliant, but he actually is brilliant. He mm -hmm. truly is. I mean, I call him yeah. a mad genius. He's a mad yeah. genius, is what yeah. I call him. Yeah. Now that 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 coming from George was was really really inspiring for me, you know, because he is all of that. But well, it's interesting because right. he said that wonderful thing to you and all he tells me is says, you crazy. You and Jeff Reggio right are crazy. You and Jeff Reggio right are crazy. <laughs> Why am I crazy? You know, we're not turning crazy. But anyway, <laughs> he don't say nice stuff to me. He called me on my birthday. Hey, old man. Hey, old man, it's your birthday. <laughs> That means he loved you. That's what he means. That means he loved you. That means he, he don't care you. nothing about me. <laughs> when, 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 I tell you this though. This, only one of my boys. This, this, this is a, this is a, this is a, 
This is <laughs> funny, Glenn. He told me the same thing. <laughs> this, this is a, when when Denzel asked me to write this adaptation, <laughs> the first thing I said is, "I need George," because I knew he would be straight with me. He would be honest with me. He would fight with me. He would understand me, but he would take care of me. So no matter what differences we had, no matter what uh, the journey led to, what walls we would hit, I knew he would, he cared about me. He would take care of me because he knew how much I loved August. And he knew that I would fight, fight for things of August that I had to let some of them go, but he knew I would fight and he would understand my fight and a lot of things I kept. So, and that was the reason I, I, I went to D and I said, D, I gotta have George. He said, yeah, I said, y -y yeah. <laughs> And he ain't let George go yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Give Alexander back. Yeah, that must mean something. Mm -hmm. What's she doing? <laughs> What's she doing? We have time now, to <laughs> Now, when did, when did we get back in church? Mom asked about somebody showing up. What she want? <laughs> How she come back in here? What she back here for? What she want? What, what we do? Basically, what we done did? What have happened here? <laughs> what, what, what happened here? <laughs> what you got there, Yuri? Yuri, did you have anything um, for us? A good question to kind of think about as we kind of wrap things up is: um, How has the experience of working on this film together changed you? Hmm. I'm bigger. I think every time you do August Wilson, you come out a little bigger, a little taller, <laughs> you know, a little broader. I mean, it, it, it opens the apparatus. It opens you so much. Um, yeah, bigger. Well, it, it's given, yeah, he calls it bigger. I, I call, I, I'm glad I had the opportunity to steal so much from these guys. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see it in my next performance. You're <laughs> <laughs> taking both of our work, mixing yeah, it into one. I'm just, I'm just taking everybody's work, you know, <laughs> and, and I'm just incorporating. Len Terman, the great plagiarizer of work. Plagiarizer. Just plagiarizer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you, 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 it's a family, and you, the family has become bigger. You know, the family has become bigger. Look forward to working with these guys again. Viola, the, the, that that powerhouse of a woman, and she's um, I don't want to go before saying I got an opportunity. You know, we worked together in her series, uh, uh, How to Get Away with Murder. But by then, her character, Annalise, was already drawn. Uh, she had been doing it for several years. And it was drawn, and it was of course great to work with her on that. But to have the opportunity to watch her layer and develop Ma Rainey from beginning to end was just to, to watch the way she worked, to watch the way George and she worked together. And then of course, when we all uh, became a band together, the Ma Rainey band. And those were just, uh, the kinds of things that make you want to stay in the business for another Lord knows how many years, you know, that's, that's, that's the good stuff, mm -hmm. you know, so this, I, got a, we had, I had a chance to work with these people and that's the good stuff. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, yeah. the, the, the opportunity, anytime that I can get in the room with my village, you know, and see us all working and collaborating together where, whether we in the same room or not, but that we have one goal, one singular goal collectively. And it's, and I look around the village and I see all these colors and tones, and these beautiful faces you know, of my people. Oh my God, you know, it's so rare in this business. Us that have been in this business so long, we've been on every, every white person show in, in, in the world. You know what I'm saying? So to do our thing and represent our Shakespeare, August Wilson, and have our producer Denzel Washington and, and our director George C. Wolf and, and to look around and see that our village being empowered, mm -hmm. it's just that little bitty, because it happens so rarely, 
it's that little bit of joy that helps build us up as a people, as human beings, as individuals, seeing the village come together. There's, a nice, our, there's um, another nice thing is to know that it's gonna be seen all over the world. Yeah. That don't hurt. <laughs> mm. And I would say this, I, w I would also- That's a component also, that doesn't hurt. Yeah, I would add this. I would add this as well, that I'm surrounded by all these men on the screen right now who do everything as if they're as if it's their last. No one leaves anything. We we leave it all on the floor. Viola leaves it on the floor. We are, it's a group of artists that all bring our absolute best as if it's our last time. And the idea that we are a part of something, which it was someone's actual last time, um, mm. with this incredible work on film, is such mm. a beautiful thing to say that we're a part of his legacy and part of his his final, and that will last forever. And you know, I know that we will all ask for that to for whatever final that we were able to do. If we were surrounded by people like this, that would do nothing but elevate us, help us um, get through it. What a blessing! So I, I feel very grateful that I've been a, a part of this film and these people who I've known for years, I, who I admire. You're with people you admire, and you're like, you know, Ruben, I've admired for so many years, and Michael and Glenn and Viola, and you get to actually one day you realize you're comrades and you're working off of each other and playing in the sandbox together. And what a beautiful thing it is. What a beautiful thing. And um, I'm glad that we're able to be a part of Chad's legacy. And I think mm. that um, it's meaningful, even more, even more meaningful. Even more, you know? even more meaningful. Hey, I got to take piano lessons with Radford Marcellus. I mean, come on. We 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 went and we went to the jazz clubs with him. Remember? That's we true. That's, with Brown. Brown. that's right. See, that's another thing. That music. Oh, that music yes. to bring that's somebody like music. Coleman just talked about, and I talked about the circle in the village. Branford Marsalis. It don't get no mm. deeper. Come on. He, come no on, one man. cares about the music. No deeper than Brand. He's an ethnomusicologist. He know everything yes, about yeah. anything that got mm -hmm. any pigment in it, they got music and some. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I wanna make sure that we sing his song that, that, that you yes. know, August used to talk about when, when your song is received and accepted in the world and you have truly arrived. Mm -hmm. You gotta find your song, he talks about it in Joe Turner. You gotta find mm -hmm. your song and yes, when, is it song. when it is accepted mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. then you have truly arrived. And yeah. it's time for Brantford Marsalis, you know, cause yeah. that brother. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Incredible. You know. You go ahead, Mr. Pot. No, uh, no, I'm done. I'm, no, you go ahead. <laughs> Come on, girl. Well, mm, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. How are you? <laughs> um, in all seriousness, tonight has been the perfect masterclass. I mean, this has been such an honor. Uh, thank you to Yuri for the perfect questions to guide us um, in this evening. Um, thank, thank you, Yuri. To the panelists, um, for your generosity and craft and in spirit, your authenticity and integrity in this work is so evident to each of us that have joined this conversation tonight. Uh, one of our audience members noted that this is so great. It's like when you uh, took that Shakespeare class trying to get an understanding of what Shakespeare was trying to say when he wrote Romeo and Juliet or Othello, but better because this is August Wilson. This is yeah. us. This is our family. This is our life. And I couldn't have said that any better. I don't think any of us could have said that better. Uh, we want to thank you all for joining our CAM family this evening. And of course, again, thank you to Netflix for partnering with us on this incredible um, film. We can't wait to see how you all take on uh, Mr. Santiago's Hudson screenwriting in this um, and the, the legacy and work of Mr. Wilson. And uh, it's again, it's available on December 18th on Netflix. Please watch it with your family and with your loved ones. We hope that you all stay safe, healthy, and well as much as possible. We wish you a prosperous and healthy into your new year, uh, up to this year rather, and going into your new year. And uh, thank you all again for joining us. And I'll close with that. All right. Everybody have a great night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Good to see you, brothers. Good to see you, brothers. Good to see you guys so much. Good to see you. Good to see Ruben. you. Ruben. Mwah. Mwah. Mwah, you guys. All right. Be blessed. <laughs>